It all started around five months ago. Fellow creator Yoreed had just released his long-awaited indie game, I mean Geometry Dash level, Floating Outskirts. For the two of you who don't know what Geometry Dash is, it's a rhythm-based side-scroller for phone and PC. The main gimmick is that it only has one input, or two if you play with two-player mode. Geometry Dash also includes a level editor that's, let's just say, way too powerful for a $4 game. Yorid spent hundreds of hours painstakingly crafting his game within a game, and the thing instantly popped off. For good reason. Geometry Dash 2.2 added platformer mode, but this was made in 2.1, meaning all the mechanics were created completely from scratch. At the time, Geometry Dash still only had two inputs max, but Yorid got around this in a really creative way. You hold left to move left, and right to move right, and then tapping the opposite direction that you're moving while you move will cause you to jump. You can do a straight up jump by tapping both inputs at the same time. It all feels really weird at first, but once you get used to it, it works surprisingly well. Anyway, fast forward a few days, and Yorid would release his next level, Floating Sandbox. It's essentially a stripped down version of Floating Outskirts with just the bare essentials. To go along with this, Yorid announced his very first creator contest. The best, I guess you could say mod of Floating Outskirts made by December 1st would win. And the winner gets... Well, you don't actually get anything, but I'm, it's still cool. Enter this absolute fool who was stupid enough to join, forgetting the fact that they can't keep a project small to save their life. I cycled between a few different ideas. After realizing that a gravity mod or a working portal gun were a bit too ambitious, I took inspiration from another mechanic in Portal 2. The gels. Why gels when you can have jams? There's an old level I made called Jam Factory, and why not expand on it with a portal-esque platformer? Using jam on the walls and floor is gameplay. I also had this pretty cool song I made, and this gave me a chance to finally use it. My plan was simple, it was to make three separate levels, each with 10 to 15 rooms. I would keep everything pretty basic, so that shouldn't be a problem. After brainstorming a few different flavors of jam, it was time for the trigger work. So I started on my game, within a game, within a game. This idea was pretty simple, so it shouldn't take too long to add the mechanics. Especially since most of them are already made, you know. At worst, maybe a few days. I've actually made a bit of progress already. This sticky jam on the walls slows your fall and lets you wall jump. Let's test it out. Ah. Uh. Oh, uh, that's not how that's supposed to work. So, uh, it's been a while since I've recorded anything. Uh, I don't know if this video is going to be the next thing I release. Um, I've been going kind of insane. You might be able to tell. This is all debugging the, the wall jump and stuff. Yeah, anyway, uh, it's really cool though. I finished basically every gimmick if I go all the way over here. I hate the fact that there's a high refresh rate mode, but like the physics work slightly differently. I can't do anything. Anyway, look at this goddamn double jump. This is actual butter. Like this, this place so good. I think I just solved world hunger because, oh my God, just spread this on everything. Butter for everyone. I died, but no, yeah, it's actually crazy. I've spent Ah, no, a few dozen hours polishing this one mechanic. I am a sane individual. Look, look at this. Look at this crazy tech. Uh, anyway, I also had this uh, bouncy jam. It's dependent on your height that you launch yourself at it from. So if I go a little bit lower, I don't bounce as high. I go from higher. Look at me go. Uh, so yeah, no, this is crazy. Uh, I made conveyor belts. I don't even know if I'm going to use them. Boring, dumb conveyor belts. See, it's more stuff. Here's more wall jumps. Uh, I added ceiling slime. I don't know if I'll have anywhere to implement that either, but uh, it works. It was kind of hard to get that working because the hitbox isn't, because literally everything is hard to get working. Uh, this is a door. I haven't made that do anything yet, but it will. Anyway, sorry, I haven't shown any progress on this as I've been building it, but it kind of would be impossible to even try to formulate words about what any of this means. <laughs> Look at my wall jump. Dude, it's really polished, okay? 
I didn't like the jumping system in this level, so I remade the entire thing. Uh, I've spent about three weeks out of the maybe five weeks of this contest has. Uh, it got an extension, so that's a godsend, but no, I've spent over half the contest just making a wall jump. I've gotten a lot better at triggers though, so that's cool. Anyway, I think now what I need to do after I get the room switching or level switching working, which is what this door is, is just to do level design because I have not gotten around to that and that's kind of important. As you can see, I have these templates of the different rooms and how they're going to be laid out. But yeah, um, now I can finally talk to people while I do things because couldn't do that while I was working on mechanics. So that'll be fun. My work was laid out in front of me. Despite taking way longer than I thought I would with the mechanics, I continued on with my same plan. The contest deadline had the potential to be extended more, but I didn't want to rely on chance. If I wanted to make three whole levels in the span of two weeks, I'd have to work fast. My plan was to keep the decoration style very simple, but even with that, there was no time to waste. It was Thanksgiving break at the time, that's an American thing, which gave me a full week off of college, meaning I could put my full focus into this. So without skipping a beat, I jumped right into level design. So, this will be the starting room, and essentially I want to teach the player all the floating outskirts controls. So yeah, you have to jump over these walls, so that shows the player how to jump. Um, to the left, this will be the room that leads you to the next level. So what I'm going to do is have a big wall up here and then there will be some bouncy jam on the floor. There's going to be something on the ceiling that squirts down bouncy jam, but you have to like go all the way around here, hit a switch and then fall back and down this room, come back, backtrack a little bit. And now I got to make the actual gameplay. What I'm thinking for this first room is I have a floor like this. This will teach you both the double jumping and about the floor slime. I'm gonna come over here. You have to double jump over that. It teaches you that. And then I'm gonna add some floor slime. <sighs> so I think what I'm going to do is add another spike here. And you might say that looks kind of hard, but this is a floating outskirts fan game. What does the green on the ground do? It keeps you from jumping. So see if I try to jump here, I can't which is why I have to go over here and then do the double jump in the silly way. Anyway, I'm excited to be working on level design now because with working on the mechanics, I can't stream that because it's just me spending hours like racking my brain to try to figure out what's happening. I can't concentrate on streaming while I'm trying to figure that stuff out. After setting up a quick start position system, I started to work on the other rooms. This third room teaches the player how to wall jump in a pretty safe environment. I did make some other gameplay in the room, nothing too hard. Got a little bit more platforming going on, messes around with the floor, floor jam gimmick. Since floor jam's already been introduced, I thought I could fill this extra space by messing around with it some more. You have to double jump here to avoid the jam, otherwise you get stuck and have to restart. The wall jumping itself is pretty easy and gives the player a lot of space. Like I said, I wanted to introduce the player to the mechanic with some room for error. The next room took me a bit of time to figure out, I wasn't really sure what I was doing. I got something down, but I wasn't really happy with it, so I deleted it and started over. This isn't actually the final version, but it was definitely getting closer. You really have to make creative use of not a lot of space. And the next room also took a bit of trial and error. I wanted to include a healthy dose of wall jumping while also introducing switching directions. The way it works is, uh, say you're wall jumping. What you'd do is you'd let go of the direction you're moving while still in the air. It actually feels really intuitive once you know how it works, I've seen some people struggle with it, but once you know how it works, it, it feels really good to play with. It was pretty easy to program too. Since wall jumping is the core mechanic of this level, the next room was more of the same. Besides my wall jump shenanigans, I made use of extra space on the top with a bit more floor jam. Yo, look, another soft lock. Those are the best. After that, it was finally time for something new. This room was a good one for introducing bouncy jam. With the spot the entrance is in, it makes for a good setup where you gradually climb by falling from higher and higher platforms. This keeps on going like this, just a corridor. 
and then this room there'll be a switch and then you have to go down here go back down here and then fall down a tunnel that goes all the way back to the starting room that was my original plan so that's what i did next to fill these final few rooms it was time for my last gimmick this here is death jam i i don't think i have to explain what it does it was pretty hard to set up. Totally didn't just place some spike hitboxes and nothing else. <laughs> I'm a genius, I know, thanks. <laughs> With all that hard trigger work out of the way, I got to building my final few rooms. At least under the plan I currently had. For this gap right here, I wanted to kind of make a dropper. You know what I'm talking about? Something like this, where you have to dodge obstacles as you fall. However, my inner GD colon was seething at how unsight readable this was. I decided to just delete it all now and come back to it later. I reworked a lot of stuff off camera. I wasn't really that happy with how overly complicated the whole setup was. You know, you hit a switch that places bouncy jam in the final room, you then have to wrap around back to the starting room, and on top of all that, you still have to fall from a high place for this jam to even do anything in the first place. So here's what I did instead. The dropper section starts in this room now instead of the one to the right. On the sides of the dropper I placed a bunch of wall jump jam which slows your fall, giving you time to react to the gameplay. And finally I just made it so you fall directly onto the bouncy jam. You need the height from the dropper to make it onto this platform, so it's a clever little use of already existing mechanics. Usually in game design the simpler answer is the better one. And with the first level done, I just needed to make the gameplay for the other two levels, and then I'd start on decoration. Still just under two weeks left, uh, should be manageable, right? <laughs> so, there's a problem. I got level switching to work. I have a door over here, as you can see, when I go through it, I'm in a new level now. It loads in a new level, starts moving that along with the player. It turns on the hitboxes the new level, just stuff that keeps it from getting too laggy. I thought it would be a quick thing to add, turns out it took like 7 or 8 hours, there's so many little things to be aware of. Uh, but now that I'm here, honestly I'm starting to realize just how massive of a project this is within the deadline I have. There's still like a few weird little issues, like I'll get desynced over time. The cube will be in the wrong spot. <laughs> the moment I started recording it stopped doing it, but trust me, sometimes it just gets off sync for no reason and I haven't found a way to like consistently fix it. I don't know, maybe I'm just not smart. So what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna make a demo version for the contest and I think I'll finish this sometime in 2.2 after this video releases. Here's the level switching triggers by the way, in case any of you were curious there. Yeah, it's not a simple system. But yeah, that basically means it's time to get to decoration already. I reverted back to an older version, and you can see instead of the door, there's just another room here. I'll have a little message saying, thank you for playing the demo. Play the full version when that exists. Something like that. Yeah. With around a week and a half left, I finally snapped back to reality. Even if... The deadline got extended again, which it might not. I started to realize that this is me we're talking about. As much as I wanted to make a full fan game for this contest, I'm well aware that I don't work very fast, so a demo would have to do. But the good news is, now that I was just making one level, I could put a bit more effort into actually making it look good, which is more my comfort zone. With that said, Thanksgiving break was coming to an end, and after that were finals, so I knew I better not go too crazy. I wasn't really sure where to start with the deco, so I started with a background. By the way, I should mention that this contest had an object limit of 30,000. With quite a few layers needed for this background, the object count totaled at over a thousand, and that was just for one out of the 13 rooms. Fortunately, by recycling the same two backgrounds every time the room switches, I was able to save a lot of objects. Also, uh, I forgot to record myself making this ground, but here's what I got. The 3D is actually pretty easy to do. You just select the block design's base, scale it down a bit, move it back a few Z layers, and from there you connect the bits. Or you could try whatever the hell Aimbotter was doing. Since I wanted realistic lighting, this actually still took me quite a lot of time to do. 
but the scaling method definitely helped a lot. For the gem on the walls and floor, I kept the basic shape, using glow and highlights to make it stand out. I also splattered some, that that's definitely gem, on the back wall for a bit more atmosphere. And with the soft blue glow of a central monitor welcoming you in, the level was starting to take shape. There's another thing I wanted to add to this monitor. I was trying to think of the best way to teach the player this level's controls. I don't really like when games have walls of text telling you how to play. I took some inspiration from Rob Top's level's Stereo Madness. If you die to this spike twice, the game will tell you to click slash space to jump over the spikes. Or whatever that is on your device. So, in Jam Skirts, if the player doesn't jump for about 5 seconds, this happens. I sure hope this graphic actually makes sense. After that, I totally forgot to record myself building the next room, uh, here it is. As you can see, the monitor changes when you land. It starts by showing you that you can double jump, and now shows that you can't jump on jam. I really like these title cards in floating outskirts, so I decided to make my own in the same style. This is only one level, but I mean it still looks cool. If you watched my last video, you'll know I made a character called Jamber. I like the character more, so I ended up changing this later. For now, it's a play on the word chambers, like the test chambers in Portal. Anyway, I decided to make some jam stains on the walls as well, because it was kind of weird for them to just be in the background. And then I added some spooky black fog for that sweet, sweet atmosphere. Oh yeah. That's the stuff. I fortunately learned from my mistakes with the last room. Since I'm a professional, this time I obviously remembered to record building the third room. God damn it. Anyway, you jump up here. This is the next room I need to decorate, but this one's gonna be kind of complicated and annoying to do, and I think I want to take it easy on the next room, so I'm, I'm gonna do the, I'm gonna do the room all the way over here. This one right here, might as well. Atmosphere's perfect, thanks. Yeah, no, I'm so happy with the atmosphere. Like, you can, you can smell and feel like the cold, sticky air, the metallic sweetness just by looking at this. Yori really did make platformer mode possible before Rob Top. Yeah, no, floating sandbox is just platformer mode before platformer mode. By some miracle, I actually did remember to record myself building this next room. Probably because I did it on stream. This room contains bouncy jam, a whole new kind of jam. So I'd have to spend a good amount of time making the art for that. Oh god, I'm sweating bullets. And, I mean, I'd talk about this next piece of art, but it's just kind of trash. Seriously though, I spent over three hours on this single dumpster. Don't ask me why. I'm genuinely really proud of the final result, which is funny because it's a dumpster. At this point, Thanksgiving break was pretty close to being over. With my dwindling free time, I knew I better stop procrastinating and finally decorate this room. Ah, uh, yeah, no, with this much going on, it's going to be rough. <laughs> I knew if I could just get past it, though, things would get a lot easier. Well, better now than never. Along with all the metal stuff, I wanted to mix in some wooden crates for the one-block structures. Get a bit of variety. After several hours of work, I managed to... do this much. I mean, the 3D's the hard part, but... That's still good progress, right? All right, so a bit has happened. A few days ago, RobTop announced that 2.2 is in fact done and coming out not, probably not in November, but seemed to be hinting that it should be pretty early on in December. Also, it's like 10 days away from the deadline and everything together, I don't know if I'm gonna finish this in time. I came back from Thanksgiving break and finals are coming up and that's kind of wild. I've barely had any time to work on this. This is what I have so far on this room. As you can see I have a bit different lighting. It's coming from above and it's a bit more red. Thought that was some cool variation. Feels more open. Anyway, what I think I'm gonna do is, for now I'm not gonna do any of the 3D in any of the rooms. Also, this chain is not supposed to be in front of the player. But for now, I'm just going to do the most basic foreground designs and just see how much time I have after I'm done with that. I'm not gonna do any of the like special animations or extra polishing unless I have time. I'm just gonna try to get the bare minimum decoration out and then 
yeah, go from there, see how much else I can get out of the way. Yeah, nah, things were looking a bit rough. I think for this whole time, I let myself get too excited with ideas that I kind of forgot to, I don't know, make my goals reasonable. But after a bit of thought, I came up with a pretty good plan. The deadline still could be extended more, in fact the odds were in my favor since a lot of other people wanted more time. But still, I didn't want to rely on that, so I decided to just do the most basic decoration and then add more on top of that if I got extra time. That's called priorities. Sometimes I remember to have them. Still, even with just the basic decoration, finishing the 9 remaining rooms in the 10 days I had left was no laughing matter, mostly because of finals, and so with my work laid out for me, the grind would begin. Still in the corner. <laughs> it's gonna just be like the watermark. <laughs> yeah, that's I just in the footage now. I'm the only person with an actual face cam. I have a face cam. <laughs> oh right, yeah, sorry. Uh, did you escape? I, I did you finally install Prodigen? Some time has passed since that time lapse. Not much to my surprise, Yori did end up extending the deadline again twice. You can see for a bit there in the time lapse, I actually did get around to the 3D in a lot of the rooms. And so with that, the level was nearing completion. Or at least, most of the important stuff was there. The last two things I really needed to add were some posters that explain what the other kinds of jam do. These monitors back here show you how the sticky jam works, but I wanted a bit of variation for the other ones. One thing I really like about Portal 1, partway through the game you escape the test chambers into background areas that you're not supposed to be in. These posters create a similar feeling. Rather than intentional monitors telling you how to play, you get information through environmental cues. Posters that just happen to be there. They aren't meant for you. Having finished my beautifully made advert for Apricot Bounce, I started on the other poster, introducing my deadly grape gem. Fresh serving of lore coming right up. I see you frothing at the mouths. Who is this Merida? Whatever could this mean? Eh, hell if I know. And with that, that's really all the essential details. At this point, I just started adding bits and bobs to help fill up the empty space. Unironically, this graffiti actually goes so hard. Since all I had left at this point were loose ends, I figured a checklist would help me keep track of them. One thing I did was number all my rooms so I could keep track of where I wanted to add what. Wow, that's one manageable checklist. Game dev sure is great. Though I don't actually have to do all of these, just a list to pick from while I still have time. And so for the next few days, I just worked on this and that, slowly chipping away at my ever-growing checklist. The original plan was to have a door here at the end, leading to the next level. With this being the demo, I chained the door shut, created a detour sign, and made this temporary final room. Lore alert! This is a crystal. In the end screen, in my level, the cellar path. End screen seems to hint that the player takes it for themselves. Since Yorid is very awesome and cool, he not only included Wabaduck in floating outskirts, but also included the cellar path crystal. Of course, I couldn't ignore this invitation and decided to further the lore even more. No, but actually, please help me get it back. That thing was really expensive. Slowly, I worked my way through odds and ends. With both the deadline and 2.2 right on the horizon, I knew my time with this level was almost up. I would have to be wise with what I chose to do in these final few days. 
I'm just kidding, you already extended the deadline again. So since my last progress update, a little thing has come out called 2.2. You can see all these new triggers. Yeah, no, it's here. It's been seven years, and it's here. It kind of threw a wrench in the works with this level. I was going to make a platformer level before I finished this, but honestly, that one's taking a bit, so I think I'm just going to finish off this list. I grayed out the stuff that I don't really need to do, and I don't think I'm going to bother with right now. A 3D jam. This stuff over here, I've, I've been adding a bit of it. And dude, it's so nice. Literally, in 2.2, this is why I waited to do this. All you have to do is a little thing called warp. Just do that. There, just like that. 3D jam. You, you can see on these walls. It's going to be so easy to add that. <laughs> Fix that right there. I also apparently don't need to have high refresh rate mode anymore because the level works consistently across refresh rates now. So I can completely delete this. Because, yeah, everything now has high refresh rate physics. Doesn't matter what FPS you play on. But yeah, that's one less thing I have to do. Although, there is one more thing I want to do, and that is to replace the whole level following the player with just the camera moving to the room it's supposed to be in, because that's way more optimized. It lags so much less. It's a bit laggy having 17,000 objects follow the player, not gonna lie. While I planned to spend early 2.2 on other things, something just drew me back to this level. I actually really ended up enjoying using the new 2.2 features in this. And with the final deadline extension, I had some good time to mess around with them. Taking inspiration from my favorite pizza-themed game, Sorry FNAF, I thought it would be cool to add a lap system to this level. With the way the level's designed, you just do a full circle, so it kind of seemed like a missed opportunity not to add it ended up being pretty easy to add, too. What was really fun to add with 2.2 were particles and sound effects. Oh man, I love this update. I, I love and hate this update. This update definitely has some rough patches to work out, but, um, no, it's really cool. This is somehow the only footage I have, but it gives you a good idea of what the particles and sound effects add. Now that's spicy. It almost makes me not terrified about what any of this means. What's this? you'll notice a timer in the top left corner. In the original floating outskirts, you have 15 minutes to beat every level. Considering Jam Skirts only has one, five minutes seemed like more than enough. Seriously, you can actually do seven laps in this time, it's plenty. Technically, in 2.2, I could just make this a platformer level with infinite time, but uh, dozens of these triggers don't have infinite duration, and I'm too lazy to change that. I didn't want to be boring, though, so I spent a couple hours on a custom timer. I, I do wish the in-game time counter wasn't stupid, but it is. So I made my own. Seriously, where are the minutes? But with that out of the way, there was just a bit of polishing left to do. I worked on some animations for when the player gets stuck in jam. As you can see, they feel a lot more attached now. It makes sense that you can't jump if you're actually stuck in the jam like this. Of course, adding these animations went very smoothly with no issues whatsoever. Hey guys, you like my earmuffs? I think they're a jam. At this point, the ending room was still completely empty, so I should probably do something about that. My original plan was to give the player invincibility for the rest of the level's length, but with 2.2's end trigger, I, I could just complete the level. And what else would I end on than a stray black hole? Not sure how it got here, but that's your ticket out. I spent several hours on this, really not sure what I was up to on the day after that. <laughs> I also made an FAQ for the inevitable onslaught of justified questions, and finally noted down everyone who supported me on this journey. I really hope I didn't miss any. With the deadline now just a day away, it was finally time to release the level. And then I decided to have my friends try it. Graphic when you get there, it shows you, why are you, what are you dying to? What, it just, why isn't it do anything? Why isn't the monitor work? What is this? 
it's when if you if the time runs out, this happens. <laughs> Slightly horrifying. It stopped getting. Oh, it stopped fading it. Oh. Oh wait, no, beat more room. Okay. Oh, okay. Also. Ah. <laughs> Alright, I know I didn't have a lot of time, which is why I didn't get playtesters. But this is why you get playtesters. Still, with my friend's help and help from the comments, I scrambled to fix these issues. It was a bit stressful, but I got them worked out. The final version of the level includes some nice quality of life changes. The camera zoomed out more with this border, meaning people on shorter screens can actually see what's going on. Also, at the time, practice mode didn't exist in platformer levels, so I made my own. I know I could remove it now, but then I'd just have to remove this satisfying practice switch. And wouldn't that be a shame? Also, some people were struggling to learn the wall jump, so I made this very awesome wall jump practice room. No need to thank me. A quick side note, GG to these people for their accomplishments on the level. Under 44 seconds is definitely the hardest one, but there's a way harder challenge that I want to see if anyone can do. I mentioned it's possible to do 7 laps, but that would be extremely difficult. Still, with how hard floating outskirts is, I'm sure it's doable. So, the first person to send me video proof that they beat the level with 7 laps will get a shoutout at the start of one of my videos. Just a fun little challenge before I forget to mention it. And that brings me to present day. Looking back at the level now, there's actually a couple more things I want to add. Yorid still has yet to judge the entries, so hopefully this isn't cheating. So the first thing I want to do is, if you go over here, um, like I said, I made a character called Jamber that I like a bit more than the name Jambers here. It's like referencing the test chambers in Portal, which, I mean, it's a clever name, I like it, but again, I like the character name more. But along the lines of Portal, I actually have another name idea that I think would work pretty well. So I got this font of all the letters from the title cards in Floating Outskirts, and I'm just gonna do my best to try to create the new title for this level. Well, that was surprisingly easy. All the letters I needed were already here, so that's convenient. But yeah, it's a play on the name Aperture Science. I can probably squish it a little bit, warp the whole thing down. There we go, that should probably work. I don't know, I might need to warp it a little bit more. There you have it, Apple Jar Science. <laughs> what an original name. It's in the same room as the Jam is a Lie, it's so perfect. And of course, we can't make this change without introducing the man himself, Apple Jar Jim. Rest in peace. Dude, seriously, 2.2 with like warp and all this is so nice for doing art. I made this so much quicker than I otherwise would have been able to. It's like, it's still like 420-ish objects, 430 objects, but it probably would have been even more with just, like, just look at the curves. It, it was so easy to get all these different, like, crazy shapes. I couldn't have done that before. Dude, it's so nice. Of course, now this room is a little unbalanced with just this image on the right and nothing on the left, so I made the Windows XP default background. I hope that helps. But yeah, I mean, that should be good now. Oh, by the way, I never showed you guys this. It's a Pizza Tower reference. Jam Attack Eats Jam. Kind of forgot about this over here. Very epic, by Pizza Tower on Steam. But yeah, hopefully this isn't like putting me at an unfair advantage or something. I, I think this is pretty trivial, what I'm changing. I just find it really weird having a character named Jamber and also making the first level of something that I might continue named the Jambers. I'm also, if I do continue this, I probably will include Jamber as a character like a, an integral character to this, so it just, it wouldn't have worked, so I figured I might as well change that now. Well, that's that then. What did I learn from this journey? Uh, mostly that I'm way too ambitious and that making games is hard. That's a good takeaway. Still, even after all that, I'm, I'm really, really proud of how this came out. A lot of time has passed, and I think I should address the question. Will I make a full version of this? 
I guess we'll just have to wait and see, won't we? If I do, it might be something a little different than what I originally planned. But I think that just about wraps things up. All we have left now is the showcase. Enjoy! You know, I never actually checked my hours on this level, and as you can see, Geode is out, and so are a bunch of mods for it, including better info, so I can actually check that now. These aren't the actual hours on the level, so what we have to do is go to Floating Sandbox, I forgot I have level pronouns on, 422 hours, 18 minutes, plus another 3 hours, 16 minutes, and now it's time for the most fun part, uh, math, and so that should be my hours. Jesus Christ. <laughs> 